Beautiful. Uh, I am Krzysiek Kowalik. Uh, you can call me Chris, uh, because uh, recently I heard that some guys in uh, Melbourne University uh, did the research about uh, people's names, and they discovered that uh, the more difficult uh, your name is, the harder it is to maintain your relations, uh, get a better job, and do all, all that stuff. So Polish guys, you, uh, you should think about it and make, uh, make your name a little bit easier for foreigners. That's why you can call me, you can call me Chris. Uh, you can call me Nathatch as well. Uh, you can find me on the internet, uh, on GitHub, or on Twitter. You can give me some love there. You can tweet about me. Come on, don't hesitate. Uh, I'm from Poland. I am from here. It's it's very very. It's a really big big pleasure for me to speak in my motherland. Uh, thanks for that conference. Great that things happen here as well. Uh, but one year ago, I moved to Uruguay. Reason I think is obvious. Uh, I will not tell you about Poland. Everyone knows how Poland looks like, right? Uh, I will tell you a little bit uh, what is in Uruguay. There is a lot of cows. There is four times more cows than people. And people eat. Uh, actually, people, uh, that kind of people uh, maintaining that cows, they're like some sort of cowboys. And people eat a lot of cows. Every time. Always. They dance a lot of tango. They are crazy about it, actually. Uh, they are super crazy about football. They made that huge flag of Peñarol, the most, the greatest uh, football club from Montevideo. And they drink very weird herbs from weirder vessels. They call it mate. Uh, I work at Kubox, uh, at a small software house in Uruguay. Every day we are solving very complicated problems, as you can see. Uh, we take broken build very seriously. Uh, we work very hard, yeah, as you can see. And we are almost like a family. Uh, by the way, I have some gifts for you. I left them in a backpack. Uh, if you will be like, uh, interactive with us, uh, with me, start uh, asking questions and uh, everything like this, uh, your curiosity will be rewarded. So uh, don't hesitate. I have some t-shirts of our products, so be our, our marketing space. Uh, a little bit more about me. Opa! You can hear me still? Yep. Fantastic. So I'm a Ruby hero. <laughs> uh, high scale systems are my biggest passion. This, uh, some people call me optimization monster. Uh, well, I love what I do. I really enjoy uh, putting my idea into action through open source, through working with people. And, well, I am awesome at this. Let me take it out for a while. Woo! Sexy time! Whoopa! It's for Unique. <laughs> okay. By the way, you can read a little bit more about me on, on my website, uh, nathead.ch, or my recently opened uh, blog about distributed computing, about Go language, are you fucking coding me? I think it will find good place in your bookmarks. Uh, well, and I'll be talking about distributed systems today, but in a little bit different way than normally. I, my first idea for that presentation was to talk about, uh, I will hop down. Hoppa. Uh, you can still hear me. Uh, my first idea was to tell you about uh, tips and tricks about distributed computing, uh, how to scale Rails applications up, and all that, all that things. But do you really want to have a bigger hammer? Do you really need that? Or maybe you want to know or have more hammers? Uh, instead of telling you about about tools and about APIs, about bullshit, which you don't need, actually. This talk will be a bit more philosophical. It will be not how to. If you want to, how to, uh, you are striving for that. Let me Google it for you. I think you are clever people, I, I guess. <laughs> uh, maybe besides Nick. Uh, you all know how to, how to use Google. You know how to search uh, for the information. You know, 
every day you are learning new things. Uh, so it's not about the, about the information. This talk will be a little bit deeper. It will be more philosophical. Uh, I broke something again. Yeah. Uh, it will be more philosophical it, because life is a continuous journey. You are learning today tools which can be outdated tomorrow. Uh, but I have for you something which is much, much more um, above the time. Uh, instead of giving you information and giving you tools, I will give you harder hand instead of giving you hammers. Uh, this will be why to presentation. This will be about why to do things instead of how. Uh, it will give you a little bit of instinct. Uh, it will help you to find an attitude the best Unix programmers have. It will give you a confidence about your code. And everything this will come through the Unix philosophy. The 40 years old thing uh, invented by those two guys and a few couple other people, uh, it still, still remains the best solution for everything. For every programming uh, issue, the only solution is Unix philosophy, Unix approach. Uh, I actually prefer to call it the Unix Zen. And Alan Key uh, said that very well-known and very often quoted sentence that the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And Unix is such kind of invent. Uh, Henry Spencer was totally right that those who don't understand Unix are condemned to reinvent it poorly. And it's happened to me all the time. All the time when I tried to do something different, something more complicated, the ghosts of Unix were coming to me and bitch slapping very hard. Well, I think it's going to happen the same to you. Uh, Unix philosophy is a very, very good match for current web, actually. Uh, web development changed a lot during last, uh, last years. Uh, you probably remember that a few years ago, there was no need for distributed application on web. The applications were small. There was a small website. But then, bang. Web 2.0 appears, people invented blogs, people invented uh, social networks, uh, chats, and lolcats, and everything else. They started conversating, they started discussing, they started connecting each other, they started insulting others uh, as a Dutch box, and so on. And we have to handle it. We have to handle people, uh, all the million, billions of people watching, uh, watching Nyan Nyan Cat or tweeting about Friday. Friday, Friday. Uh, and we somehow have to optimize it. Also, a few years ago, uh, when I was like starting my, my adventure with programming, I didn't understand the Unix philosophy very good. And I was tweaking everything. I was optimizing everything. Every single piece of my course had to be perfect and awesome as me. That was actually before I became awesome. <laughs> and that was very bad, because systems I work working on took a lot of time to write. They were big, hard to maintain, and hard to fix. And actually, they were slower than I expected. Uh, we all know that premature optimization is source of all evil. The most powerful optimization techniques in any programmer's toolkit is to do nothing. Also, small things are beautiful. Uh, do you remember king size? Maui is piękne. Uh, small things are easier to scale because we can scale them horizontally and in a distributed way. Also, we should do one thing right, one thing correctly. We, we all know how it's going to end. Uh, that's why I think that monolithic applications must die. No offense, but there is no place in current web, in current era of distributed application, cloud computing, and every, every goodies we have and we can use to that monolithic applications. So no, no offense, but rates must die. Uh, you know, guys, web services are something which is going to replace Rails. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think Rails was great innovation at the beginning. With all respect to, to Rails and its, cre uh, uh, its creators, it was a great tool to rapidly build websites very fast to prototype them. But unfortunately, uh, 
uh, but uh, it was mostly preferred by, by startups to do things quickly and release them and validate their idea, but most of that startup failed horribly. That's why they didn't have to scale it. And those who have to, have to figure out something else. The biggest uh, companies already understand that Rails, uh, as previous uh, uh, presentation said also, that Rails is not good to do everything. It's good only to do some Rails way things. That's why web services shown up. Uh, GitHub's API is built from 30 uh, small web services. Uh, LinkedIn has plenty of, uh, of uh, Sinatra applications uh, on JRuby. Uh, who else? Heroku split up everything into small applications, libraries, and web services. And this scales, because we can scale only the part which, which is uh, not optimized very, very quickly and horizontally. Do one thing right, my friends. And keep it simple. Very often, we don't need that, that kind of uh, vehicle to move around the city. We just need small bicycles. Or rollers, I, I love rollers. Well, that's, that's very, I think that's, that's how, that applies very good to Rails. Losers live in the past. Winners uh, learn from the past and enjoy working in the present or to the future. Long uh, uh, web services are the future. By the way, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. You already know that. And the Unix is the future as well. Unix was the past, Unix was, is the present, Unix will be the future. And I think nothing best, better will not show up. So now I don't optimize too much. Actually, I don't optimize at all. Uh, we know, I think all of you know that uh, red-green refactor cycle, uh, we should first do thing working, then try to optimize it. Uh, but, a lot of people is optimizing things which are not necessary. First, we have to measure things. We have to check if we really need optimizing something. If we not measure, then we are just tweaking up. Don't tune for speed until you don't know that you really need that. And how to measure that? We can run benchmarks, but what I actually prefer is some is isolated uh, deploys uh, with integration tests uh, adjusted for, for benchmark testing. Also, even if you know that something is slow, you don't need to optimize it. Uh, I don't know, what's, what's the average uh, hourly, pri hourly, hourly salary of developer in Poland? <coughs> $30? Less? More? So one instance of uh, Amazon Cloud costs around $50, $70 per month. So it doesn't scale at all at business point of view. Also, fancy algorithms are big, heavy. Uh, you have to understand much more. So uh, average level of your programmers has to be much higher than normally, which is hard. There's not too much great programmers who understand fancy algorithms. Uh, most of programmers, unfortunately, is average. And it's just cheaper to keep things simple and you can, you can scale it horizontally, not as rails. Uh, let's say, uh, I, I used to say that stairway to programmers heaven goes through the cloud. Uh, cloud computing is something fantastic. Some people are waiting for supercomputers, for quantum processing and all that thing. You can wait. <laughs> all that futuristic bullshit is, is nice, but it's not gonna work in my opinion. Uh, because it was already proved many, many times that any supercomputer can be more cheaper and more efficiently replaced by a cluster of Linux machines. So, are you ready for the cloud? Are your applications ready for the cloud? How many people deployed application, uh, distributed application in the cloud? You see? You are in the past. If you want to go toward the future, you have to be ready for the cloud. And doing one thing right, because if you do one thing right, it's easier to scale it horizontally. Like, for example, drinking beer. <coughs> it's a fantastic example. Uh, you, we are going to the bar. Uh, okay, we pick up some girls, but some people prefer beer. Uh, and 
imagine that restaurant uh, hosting Crossover B has only one, uh, one bartender. Everyone is sad because it's getting slow to get beer, right? We can scale it horizontally and add more, more bartenders. Only to the bar, because Rosloffer B people are not going to eat too much, so we don't uh, need to have more cooks. The same is with your applications. Let's say that one part of your application gets, generates high load, very high load. And you want to separate only that part of application and only that part has to be scaled. That that's works great uh, with small web services. Also, if you do one thing right, uh, if you do one thing right, uh, you, can, you can write uh, slow things in other languages. And the most important part, data. Data is the most important part of your application. Oops. Uh, and I will not give you any, any advices how to, how to choose data store, how to choose uh, tools and so on, because you can Google it. Uh, you, can Google the, you can find in Google that uh, Cassandra is good for, for a lot of writes, Redis is good for cache or some, read, uh, some fast reads and writes, and so on and so on and so on. That's all, all the tools. Uh, you have to cache everything. Everything you can should be <coughs> cached. If you can avoid round trips, you are the winner. If you can't avoid uh, asking the server for many things, you are, you scale, that scales. Uh, like I said, you shouldn't be enclosed into one language. If you can do something in other tool, uh, much, much simpler or faster, or uh, it helps you, uh, helps you with your problem, don't hesitate. Uh, choose, I don't know, choose Go or C++ to image processing. Choose Erlang to some, uh, to some computing stuff. Choose Ruby to, to, not, not super performant things and so on. That's, that's, that's the way if you split it in, uh, into smaller <laughs> web services. The one thing right. Distribute it everywhere, not only on your hardware. There's plenty of people visiting your website and they have a hardware. They have iPhones, beautiful Macs. Some of them have Linux too. Yes, we are here. And they all have computing power. And there is a JavaScript, so you can distribute some, some fancy things to the front end. Uh, that that's also gives you nice separation between the view layer and the APIs behind. Uh, guys were talking about it today. Uh, also, also Jim was talking about it. That's the way. And last part, uh, sharing, sharing data. Don't do it. Don't make your application state uh, having a state. State sucks and states doesn't scale and states gives you a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, messaging is the future. Martin is gonna tell you a lot of uh, things about messaging in the next, uh, next presentation. I will not, I'm not going to, uh, to tell you too much in that case. He, I think he will hover everything. Uh, but remember, if you have, <coughs> if you have clusters of, of your application, if you have the distributed systems which have to communicate each other, use messaging. Don't use database as a log, don't use uh, some fancy things. This is pretty simple. Because messaging is a check noise of, of the distributed systems. Uh, so that's basically all I wanted to say. Keep things, things, uh, keep things simple, uh, cache all the things, uh, separate things into web services, follow the Unix philosophy and talk about it. Spread the, spread the water about it, tweet about it, blog about it, because it's very important. A lot of uh, newbie programmers uh, without system programming background, are most of PHP users, they are sticking to the monolithic, uh, monolithic applications, also Rails users, I'm sorry. Uh, they are sticking to the monolithic applications and it's, which are very hard to scale horizontally. It's not about the algorithms, I told you. Algorithms are not important. important uh, the most important part of your application is, uh, is to be able to scale horizontally easily and change the, change the parts, parts of it without <coughs> affecting, uh, affecting many things. Think about your data from the user point of view, from the flow point of view, as Jim said. Uh, this is a great, great technique for that. Model your data for flow, not for the, for the storage. Storage is side effect, the same as framework. All that things are only tools which could be replaced. 
and long live web services. That's the future of the web development. Don't hesitate to use it. Uh, who, did, uh, who didn't read that, read that book yet? The Art of Unique Progr Programming. And how the fuck you can call yourself programmers? <laughs> Get the fuck out and read that book. If you want to be as awesome as me, you have to read that book. It's, it's a Bible of, uh, of Unix programmers and gives you everything you, you need to know about the programming. This is also second second book from uh, Carrihan and Pike, uh, The Art of Programming, I think. Both are really worth to read. But that, that's one is the most important. Thank you very much. If you have any questions to me, I feel free to ask. That's the point from which uh, that presentation starts. In my opinion, you will not build high scalable systems. That, that talk is supposed to be about high scalable systems without distributing them. And to distribute the high, uh, to distribute uh, system and provide high scale for them, alone, you have to separate uh, parts into into small chunks, which are easier to measure, easier to test, easier to distribute, easier to deploy. Also, from the business point of view, easier to, uh, to learn for new developers, so you don't have to know all the system, you just may know the part and work on it. And this is, this is, uh, this is the key feature of Silver Bullet for high-scale systems, not for some small applications, uh, small blocks or something. Sorry, I just don't, don't get it because you, you're telling us to start with this. That, that doesn't make sense to me. No, 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 no. I, I didn't say that we should start with distributed systems. I say that uh, you should keep things simple and think about distributing them. Uh, it's very hard to explain. You, as I told you, you have to think about the data. You have to think about uh, what Jim said yesterday. That was uh, the best stuff uh, of the conference so far, <laughs> I think. Um, the most important part of the systems, or high scale systems, is to distribute them horizontally. And you can do it with only that, that was the point of, of my talk. So, so, what's the problem with Rails? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, because we are using like Rails, I mean, you can, you, you can use Rails in a lot of different ways, and you can use it also to be a, a, to build a horizontal scalable back. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, the, the problem with threads are mostly developers. Mostly developers which are coming uh, with a high of wow, right way, and they are doing, uh, they are using many features which uh, are very, <coughs> very dirty for this. So, but, I mean, this is, uh, but people are stupid, and this is with every technology, right? So it has nothing yeah, to do with threads. Right. Uh, mainly what, what I found in, uh, maybe from the other hand. I, I will explain it a little bit differently. Uh, I really loved Rails, and Rails was a great tool up to Rails 3.0, but from 3.0 they started adding many things uh, which I didn't like, I didn't need it, I, I was not using it. Uh, that's why I think Rails went to in, into the wrong direction. And if they want to keep up with the future, they should rather remove things from the system, not adding them. Uh, that's, that's the main problem with Rails I, I found. Personally. But you can do it yourself. You can just ignore the part of the line. 
Yeah, I can skip the race too. As well. Oh, or you can use rate three, but strip it down to whatever you want. Yeah, but that's not the rapid right development. Then that's not the spirit of race. Race should be uh, yeah, cop, yeah. cop, cop, <laughs> cop, and write write fast applications, right? How they produce it? That's <laughs> not. That's <laughs> sorry. I'm. <laughs> Do I recall uh, correctly that this says uh, on the race website as well? I don't know, but uh, to, <laughs> me, to, to me it sounds like you, you, are, you have this hammer, you, you hammer on your own hand, and then you complain about the hammer. For sure, yes. Um, so you use it in a different way. Um, yeah, but this is... Uh, Even if it's written on the hammer uh, that you can hammer on your own hand and it's safe. It's yeah, but this, this hammer looks like, uh, right now for me, this hammer looks like a clown's hammer with a lot of different things around which, which are, which is getting hard to hit that nail with that hammer. That's, that's my, my subjective opinion. Okay. Any more questions out there? Go ahead. Because you said that when someone goes into race and uh, he starts learning, there is a lot of things that he should not use. Uh, and I usually you think that new developer that's starting from developer, development can uh, develop distributed applications in a way that they will work and do it really quickly. So could you repeat the last part? Uh, so the question. Do, do you think that new developers are starting uh, what the Starting, starting learning web development can develop distributed applications that are scalable, workable, well and are easy to maintain. Yes, so definitely. Yes, definitely. I, I think it will be easier for him to to learn from the basics, from writing smaller services instead of uh, writing big monolithic applications, with, into which he may get lost. Any more questions out there? All right. Thank you very much.